Before you continue watching this video, make sure you check out the first five mistakes that you overlook from the card up above. Uh, the next one is slapping. I guess slapping your stomach, slapping the side of your abs, slapping your, your shoulders, slapping your gi. Yeah. Why would you say this is bad? Because it's almost like stomping. It's something that people do to give the impression mm. that they're like a superhero with these sound effects. Mm -hmm. But again, it is just a way of cheating. And many times it can happen when you're too relaxed. Oh. then naturally you will you will actually slap yourself ah, very like... quick also mm -hmm. yeah and it can happen and that's fine just like sometimes you can also be stomping because right, you should right. but when you do it excessively and with the sole purpose of trying to impress people with loud sound effects then i think that is not really a good idea right i think the most common slapping example is with the hikite to yes. the stomach Yes. like this and it, it even hurts right <laughs> when you do that to yourself <laughs> so the, you know. i mean my point is just you should be hitting the opponent not yourself mm. <laughs> clear that if you finish a simple. kata and you take off your gi and there are red <laughs> marks everywhere then something is wrong right 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 so the next common mistake is their posture so in karate most of the time we want our posture to be straight however there are times when people lean forward to the side back why would you say this is bad for the technique to happen? Well, in general, if you imagine you have four points, like a square, so each mm -hmm. shoulder represents one point and each right. hip socket represents one point, mm. then you want to have this square perfectly aligned at all times. Right. Right. Now, naturally, there are some um, cases where you might have to break this rule. Let's say if you do the last movements of a kata called kururumfa, where you do these uh. takedown techniques and you lean over, then that's fine. But otherwise, it is really important that you, that you strive to keep these four points in a perfectly straight relationship to each other because mm -hmm. your posture affects everything else. See, what happens is that the human body tries to find different ways of always maintaining good balance, which means that you start compensating and tensing mm -hmm. up different body parts in order to maintain this relationship. And that's when your technique and kata will suffer. So I believe for you to get the correct posture at all times, the points that we mentioned, breathing, uh, relaxing, they all come together at the purpose of you having the right posture for you to execute the correct technique, right? I think so. Mm -hmm. Next point is hip movement. So oh, yeah. I believe a lot of people might be having a trouble with this. You know, the masters tell you, rotate your hips, move your hips. but. In your head, they're like, I can't do it. How do I rotate my hips? <laughs> <laughs> Why is hip movement important, first of all? Exactly. It's important because the hip is the primary mechanism through which the human body achieves great power and acceleration mm. for your techniques. It's like an engine. And if the right, engine right. isn't working, then you're not producing <laughs> any power. Right, right, right. right. right or transferring any power. Mm -hmm. So for this reason, it's really important to not just have strong hips, but also mobile and flexible hips, mm -hmm. because you want to be able to twist those hips. Doesn't yeah, matter yeah. how strong they are if you can't actually move them. And the human body actually, the hip socket, achieves mechanical stability through internal and external rotation, mm -hmm. which is why you need to really focus on your hip mobility if you want your kata to be good. So always stretch out those parts. And, yeah. you know, I always think about the knee too, knee mobility as well. Yes. So, you know, there are people that focus too much on the hip rotation. True. And their leg is like a straight stick. And oh. It's like yeah. this. <laughs> However, it's your ankle, your knee, and your hip that's flexible enough to be generating those powers. So always, if you can, if you, can you know, simultaneously move those and coordinate it so that it all you know it comes to your arm i think that's the best way you can do it i agree so, hip movement very critical and don't lock yourself at the same spot the our next one is metsuke so what are some common mistakes that people make with metsuke and what is metsuke first of all hey you're the japanese <laughs> <laughs> metsuke well, I guys <laughs> uh, let me explain no you go uh, ahead <laughs> metsuke me means eyes tsuke means to attach something so you're attaching your eyesight to somewhere. So it's, it's basically, it basically means eyesight in English. 
So yes. why would I The term I like to use is gaze. Gaze, ah. Yeah. Gaze is more of like a area kind of word, right? Yes. And eyesight would be a point. So I, I agree. I think mitsuke can be expressed as gaze. So what kind of mistakes do people make with gaze? With well, mitsuke? I would say that the most common one is looking down. I don't know why people maybe want to look at their feet because they're afraid mm. of falling over. <laughs> but there is definitely some comfort in looking at the floor. But I advise people to try to imagine that they're actually fighting mm. somebody when they're doing their kata. So focus your metsuke, your gaze or your eyes on the imaginary opponent and not their feet. Mm. And I think a lot of people look at their hands too when they do the yes. technique like this. <laughs> And it's definitely okay when you're learning something new mm, or if you want to look at the mirror to see that everything is nice, all the mm, lines are straight mm, mm, and so on. But there comes a point when you have to let go of your visual sense and start mm. to move more inwards. Mm, I agree. So the last mistake is people lacking mental focus during the kata. So could you tell me a little bit more of what you exactly mean by mental focus? Yeah, so when you're doing a kata, it's very important to be focused on what you're doing, not what everyone else are doing. Mm. And it's really common when you do kata that you, at least as a teacher, I see this a lot. People are looking at the people around them. Mm. To, maybe because they're a little bit, um, maybe shy? They, they lack the confidence, perhaps, mm. in their techniques. They're not sure if they're doing things right. Mm -hmm. But even when you know that you're doing things right, some people still keep their focus spread around instead of focusing mm. on what, sh what they should be doing themselves. I see. And it becomes like a bad habit. Right. So right. that's why I think it's really important to have the mukso at the beginning of your session. Like a quick uh, meditation, essentially, where you just clear your mind of everything that's external and distracting, and then focus on being here, and now and have this present mindset mm. and uh, you could call it mindfulness even mm. of what you're supposed to be doing and then after training then you can have your mokso again and then start thinking about <laughs> work and school and kids and shopping and whatever you want to <laughs> do but when you're in the dojo you should try to leave that outside right 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 so the mokso works as like a barrier for exactly. your lesson right and even if you don't have a formal meditation at the beginning or end of the class, you can have your own mukso. Just when you start oh. your kata, just before you bow, before oh. you say the name, just stand there and just focus on being fully present. Then open your eyes and start with the kata. Just give yourself a few I seconds see. to center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's very good. And also the le, right? Yes. That's one example of a sh very short <laughs> mukso or very short Exactly. Stretch. So yes. if you guys can, you know, utilize that one, I think it's going to be very good too. I think so too. So that was it for the video today. Thank you so much, Jesse, for coming on the channel. I hope you guys learned a lot from him. Uh, please make sure you guys subscribe to his channel as well. And check out our past collaboration video from up here too. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time. And Thank you for having me.